everybody, and welcome back. It is Jeff again, and I'm still on the island. Uh, I think I'm going to actually put on my helmet as well and see if these guys see me with this helmet on. And if they do, I'll, I'll rethink that strategy. But I'm going to grab a night vision, a water breathing, an invisibility potion again, and I'm going to stock up as well. A similar set right next to it Oops. for a second round if needed I'm gonna run in there with the 14 sponges with the attempt of seeing if I can sponge out some of the interior of the castle or of the uh, the temple or fortress or whatever you want to call it so that being the case I'm gonna start in the back end so I can go get more sponges and from then on I wish I knew what broke sponges easiest because I would grab that. But I'm pretty sure, if I recall, the sponges were in the back. And grab as many sponges as I can and try to sponge out some areas. Maybe plug some holes at the top of the castle so that... That is night vision. Oh, I'm not invisible yet. Okay, there's my invisibility. So now I'm invisible. So let's see if these guys see me when I jump into this water. They don't seem to see me. Excellent. Somewhere back here was that sponge room. Maybe it wasn't back here at all. Oh, is this it? Yep, here it is. So we'll start by getting as many of these sponges as I can because that's going to make my life easier later. And I, I guess I'll just start in this room as well. See what happens if I try to clear this thing out. Um, a lot of you guys said that I took this on better than most people that you've seen um, and if that's the case, because I haven't watched many people take these things on, I didn't want to, like, ruin the surprise completely. Uh, it was thanks to you guys and your... Okay, that didn't quite work, because I still got a lot of stuff coming in from this side. So I close this thing off a little bit better, and let's put one right there on that wall. Ah, yes, here we go. And this I don't even have to do. I can just fill in like that and save some of my sponges. Because I know where the water sources are over there. Uh, I guess that. I could have sponged that and made it easier. Why am I jumping on this water? One of these is a source block. And room one clear. So I can come back and D. Sponge this is later at a later time, or de uh, dirt this at a later time. But let's just continue going down and see if we can just slowly but surely clear out the interior of this. Uh, so are these? If these are all source blocks, I really don't know the best way to take them on, except starting at the top. Which does seem to be actually working relatively well. Crap. Okay, I actually did it too well over here. I can't get out anymore. I can't get to where I want to go. Let's make a, a staircase here. I don't think I can actually get up to that staircase. I'll have to take out part of this thing. There we go. For the most part, this is going well. Let's grab my sponges back because I'm going to have to take them back and D. I should have just brought a uh, furnace over here and I could have them constantly de sponging while I do this. So, this is going to be a process that's going to take a little while. And that being the case, I figure what I can do is I can talk to you guys for a minute about plagiarism so i've wow that took out a lot i've experienced my first case of plagiarism as a an instructor so for those who don't know i am an online instructor through the through a university um i was about to say the university but that might not be good oh that didn't work at all that didn't work at all uh so I've recently had an assignment that came back, or that I had students turning in, 
Um, very, very, very simple assignment. I'm teaching a class for nurses in, oh God, nurses in a an associate to bachelor's completion program. And basically nursing has a couple facets. You have the associate's degree nurses, which are, in theory, a two-year degree is what an associate's degree is. Though, granted, I wouldn't necessarily say that the associate's degree in nursing is a two-year degree. It is, oh, is that why? It is a very, wow. It's a very tough degree and a tough two years that those nurses go through when they do an associate's degree in nursing. It is extremely difficult and on average takes at least three years it's so it's real close to a bachelor's degree without having the the title of being a bachelor's degree many people go into associate's degrees programs because they want to get done as fast as they can and join the workforce as quickly as they can um because you know the quicker you get there the the more money you make or the, the quicker you start making money i should say not necessarily the more money you make and the difference with an associate's degree nurse to a bachelor's prepared nurse class-wise is in theory only like your it's your general education classes that are required by you know the states and the the government and stuff for a bachelor's degree as well as community health uh leadership and management or something like that very few actual nursing courses go into the requirement for a bachelor's degree versus oh that scared the crap out of me a bachelor's degree versus a master's or excuse me a uh um, hi bud yeah, you're not doing so well are you yeah take you out very few nursing classes are different in the comparison between the two degrees but so many people go into stop it so many people go into the associate's degree program and they start working and then they go through and go to a bachelor's completion program so that they can do it part-time while they're working. Are you actually aiming at me? I'm invisible. You don't see me. You don't see me. So they'll do it while they're, uh, while they're working so that they can earn money while at the same time finishing off the their bachelor's degree so that they can eventually move on to either a master's degree or management positions or whatnot. Because in nursing, it's funny, they've said for years they're trying to get rid of associate's degree prepared nurses, but they want to move everybody over to a minimum of a bachelor's prepared nurse. They said it for years. They're slowly, slowly, slowly starting to implement that a little bit more than they were in the past, but it's still not anything official. So associate's degree nurses are just as prepared. Many hospitals don't have any different pay scale excuse me either i got the hiccup so sorry if i stop talking every so often uh but many nurses or many hospitals don't even have a different pay scale for whether you're associates or bachelor's prepared nurse so many people who get the bachelor's like i did are like why don't i spend time getting a bachelor's degree you know i obviously didn't need it because they're getting paid the same i mean it's really i don't know I don't know what to say about that. I, I don't really mind the fact that it's we're not paid any different because I think we do the same thing. And I know many, many, many associate's degree nurses who are way smarter than I am. So that being the case, boat was going crazy over there. That being the case, I teach in an associate's to bachelor's completion program was the whole point of that story. So I've had an assignment that I had students do. It was a very, very simple assignment. Probably would have taken maybe 15 minutes. This whole course is a very, very simple course. Very small footprint on exactly what you have to do and what you should learn out of a course. It's one of those, it's a computers and healthcare course because they're trying to bring the technology aspect over to to nursing because everything's switching over to electronic health record systems and all that stuff. They're really trying to make sure people are prepared with technology because a lot of nurses are people who aren't technologically savvy on the outside. 
a lot of older nurses. A lot of the younger nurses are because they've grown up with technology. So whether they're in a degree field that has to do with technology, they're very good at using it all because they, they've used it for all their lives. Their phones, Twitter, Facebook, computers, just in general, etc. So it's funny when I run into this course because half the stuff that we're meant to teach in this course, it's supposed to be like their intro to computing course. So half the stuff is such basic things. Anybody watching this on YouTube will understand, be able to pass this course without a problem because of the fact that it's that basic of stuff. But you do occasionally run into the student who will tell you, like, yeah, I've actually, I'm, you know, I'm 58. I decided to finally change from my associates to a bachelor's degree. I've never used computers in my life up until I've started having to and, you know, at work and now at school and things like that. So you do occasionally run into the student who is completely clueless when it comes to some of this stuff but that's okay that's what the course is for it just is a shame that a lot of people have to take the course when they already know the information but either way it was just one assignment and it was literally filling out a one-page checklist about websites just to make sure that when you get information for research papers that you can look at a site and know if it's valid it's like oh is this a satire site you know is this a joke website that I'm getting this information off of. It's just this basic checklist that you can fill out for that stuff. And I had a student turn one in and I graded it and I graded it at full credit because it was decently done. I mean, still, like I said, probably took 15 minutes. Like this assignment is very, very short. Immediately, thank God it was the next one because I probably wouldn't have noticed it right away because it was just one line that I know. Because when you read like 30 different papers all at one time, and granted they're not papers, they're one page checklists, but I'm just looking for basic information on did you actually do the assignment right? Did you actually look at a website and did you have a good argument or good rationale as to why the website is or is not a valid website that you could have used in a research paper had you wanted to? So pretty basic information that you're looking for. So I'm glancing through some of these, you know, assignments and I'm going. And the very s next assignment that I do after this one, I notice this one line in it at the very bottom. I was like, with that, wait, wait. I was like, well, because you have to do two websites. And actually, the first thing I noticed was, coincidentally, this person did the exact same two websites as somebody else. I'm like, okay. A lot of people are using things off of like cdc.gov about Ebola uh, because it's, you know, hot and popular in the news and things like that. So multiple people had definitely used the same websites when they were doing this, but not necessarily both of their websites being the exact same website that they use. So I was like, okay, let me look at this thing a little bit closer here. And I started reading it. And granted, there was a few changes made throughout the paper, but the very end of it, the last paragraph on the rationale was a word-for-word -word copy of each other. Now, I don't know if these people are friends. I don't know if these people know each other. I don't know if maybe one of these people got a hold of the paper randomly from somebody that they, you know, they didn't expect them to, they didn't want them to, and they did, and they kind of just stole the work. I have absolutely no idea what's what happened. Problem is, plagiarism is completely against university policy. It's a bad habit to do. No matter how dumb the assignment is, you shouldn't plagiarize. Now, that being said, I wrote them both an email, and I had to actually check my email and see if they responded back. And I said, I have given you zeros on this assignment. I need from you guys right now an explanation. Based on your explanation, I will make the final decision on what is to happen next. Because technically... Whoops. Technically, I am supposed to now report them to the university and let the university handle plagiarism as per the student handbook, which would be probably failing the course as well as up to, like, you can get expelled for it. Like, I don't know if these people have done this before. If they've done this before, then they would probably be on an expelling um, circumstance. I haven't turned them into the university yet. I don't plan on it basing on the responses I get back. I would even be okay with a response that said, I'm sorry, it was dumb, I didn't. I shouldn't have done that, it will never happen again, I was running out of time, and 
didn't like think I had another choice, but in hindsight, you know, I, I shouldn't have done that. I would be okay with that as a response. And I would give, I'll give them a zero on the assignment. I mean, they, they can come back from that though. And I just don't want, the only time I'll probably take further action is if the blame game starts to happen and nobody can really prove who did what. Now, I'm not a saint. I had my own problems in college. I uh, had a few instances when I was in my undergraduate program where I was cited for plagiarism. Two of them were false indictments, if you if you will, that it was a problem with not understanding, like actually one of them I'll explain. We have this class that in, we have to do, she told us from the beginning, the first three assignments or whatever you're going to do on your own. And after the first three assignments, you will, you have a partner that you'll work with for the rest of the semester. And you guys will do your assignments in, in, in groups in pairs. And on the quote unquote third assignment, a buddy and I, we worked together because we were going to be partners because we thought that was the assignment that you started working together on and actually because there was another assignment that was actually involved in the middle of there but she didn't consider it an assignment and we didn't realize that so we worked together thinking it was an assignment that you were supposed to work together on and that was where that problem came from so she even said in class one day she says there's a problem some people have received zeros because they have, you know, plagiarized, they copied each other, I need to talk to those individuals and find out, like, what the deal is with all this stuff, and we went up to her after class, knowing that we had worked together on the assignment, and we said, um, you know, we worked together on this assignment, and she's like, why, you weren't supposed to work together on this assignment, and we said, but this is the, you know, fourth assignment or whatever, you said, that's when we start working together, she said, no, 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 this is only the third assignment, so long story short, she gave us zeros, and straight up said, I understand the the miscommunication, so therefore, like, I, I won't report this to the university or anything because I don't believe it was true plagiarism. You guys didn't mean to do anything wrong. You completely admitted that you worked together, which was, the, you know, the major part of the problem. However, I still have to give you a zero on this assignment. She goes, but if this hinders you in the future from failing this class please let me know and we will see if we can work something out. And it was funny at the end of the semester, him and I were the top two students in the class and we still tried to go up to her and said, Hey, uh, so this is going to hold us back from an A minus or it's going to hold us to an A minus instead of an A. Can we, can we get points back? And she was like, no, it's not failing the class or anything like that. So we were kind of upset because it was a genuine mistake that we had made. Another time, another one of the genuine mistakes that I had made, were it was a calc it was calc two this is actually the first time it happened it was calculus two we had an assignment that was literally to do one integral so i did the integral at home went to class the next day we had a class before that which i had with somebody else that was in the class and he goes oh god i forgot to do the assignment and he sat down, he stopped working on, the, it, was a, it was a lab class, so we were working on like lab stuff, so you kind of have a lot more freedom in your, in your lab classes, so he just kind of stopped working on the lab that we were working on, because it wasn't due that day anyway, and him and I were partners, and he said, I need to go do this assignment so I can turn it in, and he literally worked on the assignment, is that everything in this room? Yes! He literally worked on the assignment, and then he got stuck, and he said, I don't understand this, whoa, 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 can you explain this to me? So I was like, yeah. So I explained it to him, and then I pulled out my assignment, and I showed him my assignment. So I walked him through this thing step by step. And he was like, okay, that makes sense. And I actually taught him how to, how to do these integrals. And he was, like, extremely happy and grateful because I helped him out a lot. He was stuck, and I, I helped him. Well, he does the assignment. He finds out some of his friends when we went to class hadn't done it. So he just let them copy his assignment. You know, and I'm not necessarily, like... It's a simple problem. You're going to learn how to do it anyway. I don't believe in, like, homework in those type of classes anyway. You're in college now. Don't just make me sit there and do, like, 
problems for homework, like let me learn it on my own, or I'll fail. Like that's or don't learn it on my own. Like I can practice, but I shouldn't have to turn something into you. Like if I study, I study. If I don't, I don't. Like that's kind of what it comes down to. But that's a whole different story. So he lets his friends copy it. Problem is. The class only had like 16 people in it, and he let like four people copy it. So six of us have the exact same thing, which I was right. I was not wrong in my answer. My problem is I had put a summation sign instead of an integral symbol. And everybody, since they, I taught the one guy, and then he just let everybody else copy his, everybody had done the exact same thing. So the professor happened to be the head of the math department in my college and was not pleased. And he said, I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do with this situation. Many people may be failing this course. Many people may get a test grade equivalent to a zero. Um, he said this whole thing. He says, so we stayed after class and talked to him and said, you know, well, what's the problem? Okay, like, this is what happened, and I, you know, and the one dude completely backed me up. He goes, look, he's like, Jeff helped me in the morning do it. He explained it all to me. He walked me through this problem. He goes, I did let other people copy my assignment, and that is wrong. But, you know, J Jeff didn't let me just copy it. He just taught me, and since he's the one that had the summation sign, so did everybody else because I let them copy. Like, he was a really stand-up guy about, like, coming clean and making sure that I didn't, like, take the heat for something that he had done wrong. And long story short, at the end of it, we a couple days like go by of class, and we asked the professor, like, uh, so what are you going to do about this? And he goes, I decided to just do nothing as of now, and we'll see how the rest of the semester goes. And God damn it, were we good kids and didn't do anything wrong for the rest of the semester. So that was time number two. Both of those valid mistakes on my part. Now, I'm not perfect. <laughs> I definitely had... Ah, the top layer of this thing is looking beautiful. I definitely had some issues where in one class... It, it, the, the funniest thing about this is the same guy that I got in trouble with the, the first time when we worked on the assignment together that we didn't... Ow, that we didn't know we weren't supposed to be working on together at the time. Him and I, really good friends, fraternity brothers. We're still friends to this day. Um, we did all of our projects and stuff together because we were both in the computer engineering program so we had like pretty much every single class together for the rest of our you know college career and we had worked together at one point which is actually how we met is we worked together at one of our first jobs through the school so we were sitting so high percentage wise in a class we had like 98 percent or something like that in one of our classes there was an assignment that we just could not figure out. And, th and this is, this class had things that built up on each other. Like you started programming. It was program as microprocessor programming. We programmed a microprocessor. And in one class session, you programmed it to do one thing. And the next class section, you programmed it to do another thing. And then, then the next class section, you combined those to get them to actually work together. So you were essentially making functions and subroutines out of this thing that built up to a big final thing at the end of the semester. So we could not figure out this one piece of it for the life of us to get it to work with our code. We had the section working, but we couldn't get it to work with our code. For some reason, when we combined them together, it caused some major error. Hi, Peak Man. It caused some major error, and we could not get it to like to straighten out and, and work. So we looked at each other, and we said, this is a, an old saying that we had in college, is when you, it, it's a time management skill, kind of. It's a, a risk-reward type of thing. It's... You look at your score. What do you have? What would happen if I didn't turn in this assignment? Am I willing to accept that? Like for the, the time it would take that I've, it's going to take me to try to troubleshoot and fix this whole thing. Or is it worth it just to not do it at all? We looked at each other and we said it's 4th and 10. Football reference. It's 4th and 10. There's two seconds left on the clock. We're at the 50 yard line. Down by 3. Basically, we need a miracle to happen to win this game. We need a Hail Mary. But what are we going to do instead? Yeah, screw it. We'll punt. So we just call it punting. Yep, we just punt. Whatever. Accept your loss. Move on with life. So we were going to do that. 
And then a buddy of his says, hey, stick my subroutine in there and see if it works. We did. And it worked perfectly fine. One little piece, one little piece of the subroutine. Like, and this wasn't even like the full assignment. This was, uh, I don't know, like a tenth of the assignment or something like that was what the subroutine was. It, it doesn't matter though. So we stuck it in there and it worked and we had him sit down and we're like, go through your code and what is different about your code than our code? We can't figure it out. So he went through our code. He's looking at it. He's like, I should sleep. He's looking at it. He's looking at it. He can't figure it out either. He doesn't know what's wrong. So he walks us through his code and the things that he did a little bit differently. And we're like, okay, that makes sense. But why that would cause like this, our, our thing to break, we don't get it. And there's no way to rewrite our code to incorporate that because you, you know, did you kind of set it up the whole thing differently to do the same thing, but yours just happens to work and ours doesn't. So he's like, dude, just use my subroutine. I don't care. Like it's just a small piece of it. So we did, we put in his subroutine in our microprocessing chip. Now, what we did not know at the time is that they put all the programs that got turned into them into a compiler comparer, and it would go through and compare lines of code from different, like, routines from the microprocessing chip, because it <laughs> converts it all to machine code at the end anyway, and the machine code all is going to, you know, be what actually does all the functioning. This particular subroutine had, like, 234 out of 237 lines of code were identical. I mean, this thing was thousands and thousands and thousands of lines of code long, but this particular subroutine came back as that. And so they realized that we had copied somebody else's subroutine and we got in some trouble for that. And I will admit, rightfully so, because that was a legitimate plagiarism. I should not have done it. But I did. We should have just taken the zero. Because that's what we planned on doing anyway. We didn't really care. We didn't need the points in the assignment to have a good grade in the class. We also just didn't want to be those guys given that opportunity to now have something that functioned to just not turn anything in. It's kind of like it's kind of like pulling a dick move over on a professor. Because I had some people do that to me last semester with one of the, the major papers. I didn't make the point value of it high enough. Many people looked at it and said, I don't need to do this paper, essentially. It just didn't turn it in. Didn't hurt their grade at all because the point value wasn't high enough. I understand that, but it is kind of a dick move in telling you that, ha, huh, your assignment ain't worth enough, son, move on. So, of course, we've changed it for this semester to be worth a lot more points because we want people to do this paper as part of the, the learning process. But we didn't want to be those guys either, so we turned it in, which we shouldn't have. And yes, I officially plagiarized, and I'm sorry. To folks out there who think less of me for that but it happened it's what it is i admit the truth and these people in my class now that i'm dealing with i understand you make mistakes i'm not going to turn you into the university and i'm not worried about them watching this video to know that i'm not turning them in because they're not the type of people who sit down to watch minecraft gaming videos but I'm not going to turn them into the university unless they give me a reason to because I understand that. Um, I hope it scares them enough that they won't do it again in the future because plagiarism isn't bad. It really is. It, it very truly is bad. Um, and I mean like legit plagiarism. Sometimes people get in trouble for plagiarism because they cited too much in a paper. Like I had an instructor tell me that once. She's like, this is borderline plagiarism. I'm like, how? She goes, because most of the paper is citations. And I said, yeah, but I cited every single citation that I did. You cannot call that plagiarism. It's I'm not stealing it and claiming it as my own. I'm telling you, this is the information I got out of this book and this is where I got it. And she's like, well, yeah, but enough percentage of your paper isn't your own thoughts. So you're gonna have to redo the paper. Uh, but that's, that's that's not plagiarism. That's, you know, just not writing the paper as well as I should have. I just used other people's stuff from the research articles. I just used too much of it. I gave them full credit for it all. I would cite everything was cited exactly where I got it all from. So you couldn't claim it was plagiarism because I wasn't claiming it as my own. But I did redo that paper as well and got a decent grade on it. Um, I just had to spend a lot more time on it than I had planned on. But that being said, I want these people to be scared not to do stupid things in the future because they really can. Like, can you imagine getting kicked out of a college for plagiarism? You'd, you'd be like, it would screw up with the rest of your life. Like, I've uh, gone to many different programs that ask for, like, you know, college transcripts and things like that. And I've actually applied for programs before 
that I took one semester at Michigan State University and then I transferred to Kettering. I don't have anything from Michigan State University. None of those classes even counted. So I never put that on college applications when I was going to like grad schools and stuff. And even so, I still had places come through and say, you need to send us your transcripts from Michigan State University. And I'm like, I didn't even tell you I went there. Like, how the hell are you? And and why do you want anything from there? Because that means nothing. It was one semester, four classes that I didn't even use because I switched majors completely and went to a whole different school after that. But it can really screw up with the rest of your life. So either way, that's my story for today. I've been talking for quite a while. We got some work done in the Guardian Temple. We've got some plagiarism to deal with in the background. And I will see you guys next time.